could tell you about a platform which has helped thousands of students to get their first job. It includes 200 plus courses, certifications, projects, upskilling, placement preparations, tracks for service based as well as product based companies, internship with TCSIN and so much more all under one subscription. Prep Insta Prime, your one stop solution for all your placement needs. Check out Prep Insta Prime now to prove me wrong. Hello everyone, so welcome to this video. We are going to discuss about Goldman Sachs verbal ability this time and we are going to discuss about all the questions and answers, the number of questions, difficulty level and everything that you are in search for, right? So let's first begin with the most important uh, detail about Goldman Sachs verbal ability is that you don't have any grammatical questions over here. All that you have is reading comprehension and that is why Goldman Sachs often calls this particular section as verbal comprehension. Why? Because you have only reading comprehension questions in this section and you have a total of 10 questions, right? So you have to solve 10 reading comprehension questions for the verbal section and um, you don't have a lot of time because you have a submerged total time about uh, for the entire aptitude section and you have to take out some time at least 10 minutes or 12 minutes for this uh, for the verbal section as well right so out of those 90 minutes you have to take out 10 minutes apart from all the remaining five sections right so it sometimes becomes a little hectic for people to solve this section because reading comprehension takes time, right? So we are going to solve a couple of reading comprehension and I'm going to give you some quick tips and tricks on how you can actually, uh, you know, minimize your time that is required to solve any reading comprehension questions. So let's move forward. All right. Before that, the top three commenters on this video are going to get a free Prep Insta Prime access. So yes, that's a fair deal that we're giving to you. So you can comment anything in the comment section below. Uh, it can be regarding your experience with Prep Insta uh, or any query that you want us to resolve for you. So we will be glad to help you out with that and also provide you a free Prep Insta Prime access as well. Moving forward, if you are not connected with us on our social media handles, make sure that you do because a lot of companies are hiring and because this is a recession period going on, uh, there are very few companies that are coming up with new hiring. So if you miss those opportunities, you are going to be, uh, probably be, uh, you know, not placed for a long time in the future. So make sure that you're following us and you have all the hiring updates uh, for your for your pass out years. And um, yes, we put all the important details on our social media handles. Now you can connect with us on a Discord as well. Why specifically Discord? Because we have a personal connect with the mentors and the students on Discord and we have live sessions going on over there. So it's going to add on to your preparation section as well. Right, so yeah, that is about us. Let's begin with the verbal section over here. Now, like I told you, that there are only reading comprehension questions in the uh, Goldman Sachs verbal ability section or the verbal comprehension section. So you need to know the tips and easy tricks on how you can minimize your time that is required to, you know, answer in reading comprehension question because like you know, they are not going to give you, a, you know, very short passages. The passages are going to be long, even though the questions can be a little easier than they seem. But passages are long, you have to go through the passage, you have to go through the question and then answer it after thinking a lot, right? So we are going to understand a few tips and tricks over there. So make sure that you're watching the entire video because I would be giving some tips over here and there and you have to pick them up as well. So you don't miss on any of them, right? So uh, let's start with the first. Now, the first tip that I'm going to give you here is always read the question first that is the most basic tip for any reading comprehension section is reading the question first why do you read the question first because it gives you an idea as to what you are actually looking for in the passage if you're not reading the question and if you're going to read the passage in the first instance you don't know what you're looking for you are just mindlessly reading each line of the passage and you don't know what you're looking for right so what we do is we first go through the question given to us and after that when we are reading the entire passage we know it gives us a click that okay this part is where I want to concentrate on right so let's read the question here first what according to the passage can make a person lucky all right so now when we're going back to the passage and reading the passage we know that we're looking for the word lucky right 
So let's quickly get back to the passage. All right. We have all been there busy with our jobs and taking care of our families. We have to do lists a mile long. If we are lucky, we stumble into bed at night, we might have crossed off a handful of tasks. So you can see that we have the word lucky right over here. And what makes us lucky is stumbling into bed and crossing off a handful of tasks. That means whatever to-do lists you have, you're crossing up uh, crossing off a couple of hand, uh, tasks in the list and that makes you lucky, right? So now that we move towards the question and the options and we need it again, what according to the passage can make a person lucky? Having a family, having a troubling sleep, uh, being busy with jobs or ticking off activities from to-do lists. So we know the answer. It's option D, ticking off activities from the to-do list. How do we know that? Because we read the question. We know what the keyword is. We go back to the passage, read that keyword and go beyond uh, into that little circumference and read the sentences and we get the answer, right? So here option D should be the correct answer, right? Ticking off activities from to-do lists makes us happy, right? So that's the first answer. Okay, let's move forward. So we have the same passage, but with a different question. So let's quickly go through it. What can you infer from the phrase the size of these tasks is exaggerated. What do you understand? Let's quickly first understand the meaning of this. The size of these tasks is exaggerated. What do you understand by the term exaggerated? It means to be stretched out, right? Or to increase in uh, volume or to increase in depth, to be exaggerated, right? Something that has to be stretched in a manner which it is actually not. Right. So that is what exaggerated means. So we are quickly going to look for this particular phrase in the passage here. Right. So let's see where it is. Let's quickly go through the passage here. Um, it, it can take you some time. So this vicious circle goes on for day after day, months after months, year after year. Right. Okay. As you can see, the stress and anxiety takes up valuable time. All right. So we have this part over here itself. For some reason, in the middle of the night, the size of these tasks is exaggerated. All right. So we have the phrase. Now let's go read two sentences above it and two sentences after it. All right. We have trouble sleeping as we think about all the things we failed to do. For some reason, in the middle of the night, the size of these tasks is exaggerated, exaggerated, sorry. When we get up the next day, we are sleep deprived and wrapped with guilt, ready to begin yet another day of being behind. All right. So here, what do you understand that the person says the size of the task is exaggerated? Why? Because that particular task was unfinished in the previous day and the person will have to carry that unfinished task into the new list of a new day and add that unfinished task in the a new list as well. That means the number of tasks is increasing, right? And the burden to finish that task is also increasing, right? So let's quickly look at the uh, options given over here. The tasks increase in weight and size. Do you think the si task is increasing in size or it's uh, doubling up? No. The task seems to become incomprehensible. Incomprehensible means something that is difficult to understand. So we don't have that. The importance of the tasks get bigger. No. Importance remains the same. Only the task is added from one list to another. It is carried over and the burden is transferred. Right? The task feels a burden to be completed the next day. So this becomes the correct answer because as per the author, the task becomes in uh, the task becomes a, a burden to be completed because it is being shifted from an unfinished task list to another new day's task list, right? So here again, option D becomes the correct answer. All right, let's move forward. So we have again the same passage, but let's say we have a different uh, question over here. Why is it said that perfect is the enemy of good? Now, coming towards the second tip of reading comprehension, that is that whenever you are uh, reading a particular question and if it is a referential question, you can just get back to the passage and uh, like point out the 
area where the line is and you can get the answer as well. But what do you do with that inference based question? You get back to the passage and look for the keywords. A word which has a lot of synonyms and has been used multiple times, right? So if you're looking for one keyword and if that particular keyword has been used multiple times, you know what the tone of the passage is. And that is one of the important questions that is asked a lot of times that um, what is the underlying tone of the passage or what is the context of the passage? Or let's say what is the what emotion is the author trying to express in the passage? All of these questions can be answered if you put your emphasis towards the synonyms of the keywords. Look for the word that has been used multiple times. Look for the words that has been used synonymously, right? And there is an answer for the tone of the keyword, uh, tone of the passage. All right. Why is it said that perfect is the enemy of good? All right. Let's move towards the passage here. Let's look for the uh, portion that says this. And here it is in the last sentence. In fact, perfect is the enemy of good, right? Another very important tip comes here is whenever you have to pick out the meaning of a phrase given to you, always break it down. Let's break this phrase down. Here it says, perfect is the enemy of good. What do you understand? Let's break it down. Perfect means doing something very perfectly, very uh, to the point is the enemy of good. Enemy means someone who is not friendly of good. That means perfect is bad. Enemy of good is what? What is the opposite of enemy? It's good. That means perfect is bad. So being perfect in everything can make you bad. Right? So let's look through the options. Doing something perfectly can ruin its quality. Trying to be perfect in everything can delay the process of its completion. Perfectionism has its cons when it comes to having multiple tasks at hand. Perfectionism increases our anxiety level. So I feel a lot of these options are similar uh, to the context. But let's quickly understand what the passage wants to tell because we have to pick the reference from the passage itself. Right? Okay. If we insist on being perfect in every task, <coughs> excuse me, we minimize the chance that we will actually complete the task. That means, according to the passage, if you are trying to be perfect, you reduce the chances of completing a task. So, here we are talking about task completion, right? So, what do you think should be the answer here? Trying to be perfect in everything can delay the process of its completion. So, according to the passage, this can be the correct answer. Alright, so option B over here becomes the correct answer for this particular question. I hope these tips are helping you out because you will need them when you're sitting for a Goldman Sachs verbal ability section because you have to answer a lot of reading comprehensions in very less time. <coughs> okay, let's begin. Sorry. Okay. Again, let's move towards the question first. Which of the following are proven methods of time management? Setting goals that are achievable, imbibe the of guilt, delegate the tasks on priority, getting perfect in the tasks. All right, let's quickly go through the passage. Where are they mentioning this part? Let's see. The key steps for successful time management are as follows. So what are those? Setting realistic goals. So we have our answer getting organized, delegate. What do you understand by the term delegate? Delegate means to allot your time to different tasks. That means you can say that, okay, I'm going to give 10 minutes to verbal, 20 minutes to quants, 30 minutes to logical. That way you are delegating your 50 minutes of time to different important sections. And you know that you are going to complete uh, that task in that time. And if you don't, you're going to move towards the second task. Right. So that is delegation and relax and recharge and stop feeling guilty. So you don't have to feel guilty in order to uh, complete a task or time management. Right. So we have our answer here, I guess. Setting goals that, that are achievable. Realistic goals means goals that you can actually achieve. So, yes. So one is a yes. Imbibe the sense of guilt. Imbibe means to take in the sense of guilt, to have guilt. And here we said that don't be guilty. So we are going to remove this. Delegate the tasks on priority. So you are delegating 
let's say you have five tasks and you are delegating it to the level uh, levels of priority that means you are going to complete the task depending on the priorities and so whenever even if the last task is left that is on the lowest on priority you will not be feeling guilty right so that is delegation and getting perfect in the task is obviously not good so we are going to go with one and three that means option a over here becomes the correct answer which is only one and three all right okay moving forward so we have another quick question from the same uh, passage so you are going to get two passages five and five right that way it's going to um, set up the entire section what is the underlying message in the passage so it's a quick uh, fun tongue twister underlying message in the passage so let's understand this question self adherence and organization can foster time management all the pending tasks of the past can act as a motivation for people. Guilt is one of the ways that can make a person an anxious and hence a person anxious and hence enable task completion. A person in order to be guilt free needs to be relaxed and practice meditation. Now, because we have already answered a couple of questions from the same passage, I think the moment you see this, uh, these options over here, you can answer the question in just one go. I would want you to pause the video right over here, answer this question and see if a question is going to be right. So we are going to play a quick game over here, right? It's, go it's also going to test your concentration. All right. self adherence and organization can foster time management for everyone. Like we have already discussed below or uh, discussed uh, previously that if you are adhering to your self principles, what, are, uh, what do you understand by the term self adherence? It means to be a self involved to depend on yourself to adhere to your principles to stick to your principles right if you're sticking to someone else's principles your tasks won't be completed and i think it has been mentioned somewhere over here as well uh, let's quickly look for the term adherence over here all right let's quickly scan it through it must be somewhere in the second uh, paragraph okay if you feel guilty try to and try to adhere to someone else's style, you are likely to become frustrated. And why do you think so? Because when you are trying to stick to someone else's time uh, management or uh, principles or task completion activities, what happens is you are not that person. So you won't be able to complete tasks according to that person or like that person. And in the process, your tasks will not be completed and you will be frustrated right so adhering to self principles is very very important when it comes to um you know managing your time and completing your tasks all right so we are going to choose the answer self adherence and organization can foster time management pending tasks will not provide you motivation guilt will not enable task completion and if you want to be guilt free don't be relaxed and practice meditation but complete your tasks and manage your time right so option a over here becomes the correct answer all right let's move forward okay a quick reminder to all of you that uh, we post um, often uh, like quick reminders and quick updates on all the companies that are hiring uh, for all of the batches out there so make sure that you are subscribing to our youtube channel and clicking the notification bell as well for, for your preparation part. And when it comes towards the information part, make sure that you have, um, you know, subscribed to our Instagram handles or Discord or WhatsApp or LinkedIn or Telegram as well. Because we are very active over there. We post regular updates for you as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's also take a quick look on our Instagram pages as well. So because this particular Goldman Sachs is about 2024 batches. So as you can see that we have posted all the important hirings like you can see for Goldman Sachs, we have Goldman Sachs is hiring, Goldman Sachs labels and test pattern. So we have all the latest updates for any companies or any batch that is hiring right now. So if you want to go for 2023, we also have a separate Instagram handle for 2023 as well. And same goes for 22 or 2020, 20, 2021 any batch that you want to right so if you belong to any particular batch follow that particular handle and you will get all the important details after that let's come to prevista prime as well because we have uh, you know told that oh, you are going to get a free prevista prime access so what are you getting into that free 
So once you come onto this particular website, now this website when we had created, uh, we had thought about the Netflix type subscription plan where uh, you are not subscribing to one course but 200 plus courses with just one subscription rate, right? So once you subscribe to Reppin Star Prime, you have all of the preparation material uh, starting from coding, skills, aptitude, interview, companies, platforms, everything in just one subscription. Uh, certifications and internships included, right? So if you want to um, have a good certification in your resume, we have the Aeon CoCubes uh, test assessment as well. We have nano degree certification for completing all the courses. It's going to help you a lot when you uh, look through the resume because we have received a lot of uh, DMs that, um, you know, people who have the certification of Prep Insta have been uh, placed and a lot of panelists also ask for the same as well. So if you want to, you know, upgrade a resume, you can get a nano degree certifications as well after completing the courses. And we also have TCS ION certification as uh, internship as well because we have partnered with TCS. So uh, yeah, you can get that also. Right. Then also moving towards popular skills. So if you again want to increase your chances of being selected, it's important that you upskill yourself, not just certification, but upskilling is also very important. And you can do that from our popular skills section. So we have Power BI, Data Science, Git, GitHub, AWS, uh, AI, ML, Cybersecurity, and all of the important um, you know, skills that Goldman Sachs is particularly looking for. So you can definitely come here and look for the same as well. And if you want to prepare for popular languages and coding, you can come from the languages section. We have C, C++, Java, Python along with basic coding. So if you are from a non-CSIT uh, batch and if you are preparing for Goldman Sachs because it's a product based company, so you have to have good technical skills. You can start from basic coding, go towards intermediate coding and then competitive coding as well. And it's going to really help you uh, to build a strong coding base as well, right? So if you're looking to get placed in Coleman Sachs, make sure that you have good skills, good languages and a uh, strong hold on your coding skills as well, right? So we are going to come back towards it later. Let's quickly talk about the remaining questions. All right. So coming towards the next question. Okay. So let's begin with this question. The international community has made progress towards preparing for and mitigating the impact of pandemics. So here, uh, I think we are talking about pandemics and, um, you know, making progress towards mitigating it or evading it completely. So like I've already given you a tip that we are going to first look into the question, understand what it is actually asking us to do. And then we're going to move back towards the uh, passage as well. All right. So which of the following statements are true according to the passage? So whenever we have any question, a tip coming over here, whenever we have any question that asks you to check whether a particular statement is true or not, read through the statements, statement one, two, three, four, as many statements are given over there. Once you read statement one, instantly go back to the passage. Read statement 2, go back to the passage. Read statement 3 and go back to the passage. Many students, what they do is they read all the three statements and then they try to, you know, figure out all the three statements in the entire passage and that is where they lose their time. Because once you have statement 1 in your head, you know what is the keyword you're looking for. So you go back and you look for the statement. Statement 2, Read the statement, go back, look for the statement. If you have all the three statements at one time in your head, it's going to clump up together and you will not be able to look for any of the sentences at once, right? So save your time. You may feel that you are investing more time in reading one, going back to the passage, but no, you are going to save your time. Trust me. We've done that and um, it's a very important tip right over here. Okay, so delay in reporting the CATS pandemic compel the WHO to update safety health standards around the world. So let's see, let's quickly read through this passage. All right, so here as you can see, it says delayed reporting of early SARS cases led to the World Health Assembly to update the international health regulations to compel World Health Organization member states to make specific standards for detecting, reporting, responding to outbreaks, right? So it was not the CATS or KT or KATZ, but it was the early SARS cases, right? So we have our first answer here that it was, it's not statement one, which is true. National donors of India have helped in funding for building health capacity. 
let's quickly go back let's quickly look for the sentence here as you can see if you go through this you can see international donors have begun to invest in improving preparedness to refine standards and funding for building health capacity so it's not international uh, it's not indian national donors but it's international donors tracing of contacts has been one of the parameters that has faced a gap in the health structure and health regulation uh, during pandemic so we have tracing of contacts let's quickly look for the keyword and we have it right over here it is tracing of contacts right and what it is let's quickly look for the words outside the health sector including global coordination and response mobilization these gaps are essentially evident in resource limited settings and have posed challenges during uh, relatively localized epidemics with dire implications for what may happen during a full fledged global pandemic so yes uh, tracing of contacts is one of the most important gaps that we are facing in um, health sectors so what do you think what should be the answer it is only statement 3 so only 3 over here becomes a correct answer right so we have option b right over here as the correct answer i don't think we have invested more than 30 or 40 seconds into it but if we had it's going to obviously improve with time right so we have our answer right over here let's move forward now we have another very big passage over here passages bore you i understand but when you are giving a particular test you cannot be bored right and you have to um like take up tips and tricks and uh, shortcuts in order to solve all of these questions so let's quickly read the question over here and then we'll move back to the passage according to tip number 1 okay which of the following statements support the notion of freedom from restraints becomes freedom through restraints now since we have the phrase over here let's quickly get through the phrase into the actual passage so freedom from restraints becomes freedom through restraints in gandhian thought what does it mean the difference between these two theoretical formulation changes the nature and content of restraints which has a strong impact on the central theme named liberty in the first formulation restraint refers to the other imposed restraints whereas in the latter to the self imposed right so the later part that means freedom through restraints right risk trains means self imposed restraints and not society imposed so which of the following uh, statements support the notion of freedom from restraints becomes freedom to restraints freedom in any form is mandatory for country to stay liberalized no it's not about country the process of getting freedom comes by going through the violence of the government again no collective freedom from restraint is more important than individual freedom no being free from one's own limitations gives more power to an individual so if you are getting free from your self imposed limitations you have more power to put a more a social impact on the uh, freedom from social restraints right so only four that means option c over here becomes a correct answer right so yes this is the best way to answer any reading comprehension is go through the phrase find the phrase in the passage and then answer the options over here right so i'm going to take you again quickly to prep and start prime because we have an incomplete discussion over here right so uh, once we come down uh, from the coding section to the aptitude section and we are learning verbal over here so what you can do that if you want to have more uh, access to more number of questions what you can do is you can also solve the aptitude based questions in the prep and start prime section as well but if you're not satisfied if you want more questions what you can do is you can come down to the company section look for the company which you are preparing for and go inside its course and once you are inside the course you have all of the syllabus details syllabus properly divided for you and then you have related details syllabus for round 2 as well and then you have the course navigation so how can you prepare for this particular course you have all of the links over here and you have links to extra mock quizzes as well right so if you are still not satisfied with the courses that we have on prepminster prime you can come on to prepminster.com as well because we have a complete dashboard company specific dashboards for you to prepare more questions from so we have free quizzes 50 60 70 free quizzes and you can uh, prepare from there as well so that is how you are going to prepare your aptitude section plus a technical section as well 
right so this is one of the most important topic which we uh, most important part which we love to provide to our students that we are trying to provide you a full fledged preparation model right starting from the basics till the advances all right so again let's quickly move to the questions over here what do you understand by the phrase kingship was basically an executive power rather than legislative now here i would say that your vocabulary comes into terms right so again another important tip right coming right over here is even if you have a good grammar structure you have a good grammar skill verbal skill great but you also need to have a good vocabulary and a good dictionary in your mind as well because in places like this where uh, you know the answer can be sought out Uh, just looking at the words over here once you put more attention on the words and their meanings the answer is right before you right so you should have a good vocabulary as well so because there's only reading comprehension in goldman sachs does not mean that you are not going to practice questions from synonyms and antonyms or let's say contextual vocabulary because they help you to build your vocabulary and where you have questions based on synonyms antonyms and related questions like this it's going to help you a lot so make sure that you have a strong base in vocabulary as well right kingship was basically an executive power than legislative so what is the difference between legislative and executive who are executives those who execute a plan or those who take action right they execute it and who are the legislators what is the legislative body the legislative body is the making body the one who formulates and drafts the plan right so there are two bodies legislative and executive legislative are the one that formulates the plan that brings a plan into life and the executives are the one who take actions on the plan right so kingship was basically an executive power rather than legislative means that they could only implement the powers and not form the powers right so the kingship indulged in only bringing law and order in the state now law and order is not brought in by the executives it is brought in by the judiciary right so we have different bodies for different work so this is not correct the kingship did not look into implementing the laws but only amending them again amending cannot be done by executives because amending means changing and changing means legislation so incorrect the kingship took charge of enacting the laws instead of looking after the legislation the kingship exercised the powers by only bringing the laws into force instead of making them so this is the correct answer they exercised powers by only bringing the laws into force instead of making them right so we are going to go with uh, part d or option d as the correct answer because executive means to execute the powers to implement the powers and legislative means to form the powers or draft the powers in the laws right so option d over here becomes the correct answer okay moving forward which of the following statements is true according to the passage so again over here we have a part which talks about the uh, passage and the statements so individual restraints brings human integrity while social restraints uphold the non violence the ethico religious principles in india regulated only individual behavior and their limits while the state was given complete freedom the west had imbibed more power in the religious administration than secularity which made religion as a control mechanism so let's quickly go through uh, go through it one by one individual restraints brings human integrity while social restraints uphold the non violence in the state so individual restraints human integrity social restraints this is our keyword and we are going to look for it in the passage here quickly let's look for it self regulation we are not looking for regulation over here i'm sorry okay we are looking for societal regulations and self regulations all right so let's yeah self regulation and self discipline instead of limiting the freedom of individuals enhances it the principles of truth and non violence and not the state regulate individual and collective behavior and protect the integrity of human so it's truth and non violence that protects the integrity of human and not individual or social right so option a over here is not correct 
the ethical religious principles in india regulated only individual behavior and their limits while the state was given complete freedom so ethical religious principles is what we are looking for so let's quickly look through it um okay let's quickly go through the passage here all right this is going to take some time okay the ethico religious principles define individual and collective behavior and determine the limits of all human institutions including the state right so in the passage over here it says including the state but the option says the state was given freedom so the state was also regulated so again b is incorrect the west had imbibed more power in the religious administration than secularity which made religion as a control mechanism so the west we are looking for the west all right let's quickly go through the passage here itself all right the west was obsessed with the concept of liberty that got reflected in political theorizing the fight between religion and excelestial uh, power was a typical feature of the modern european history many socio economic factors coupled with industrialization led to the secular securing of upper hand over religion adversely effectiveness uh, affecting the effectiveness of religion as a control mechanism so this means that the west invested more powers in secularism which affected the effectiveness of religion that means the religion was not very powerful in the west right but the statement here says that the west had imbibed more power in the religious administration which is completely wrong according to that we can say that none of them are correct according to the passage so option d over here becomes a correct answer okay so that's it we have come towards the end of all of the questions for reading comprehension these are the basic questions that no, uh, like normally goldman sachs usually asks the questions based on inference uh, what is true according to the passage reference as well so make sure that you practice a lot of inferential and referential comprehensions because you are going to get 10 comprehensions in this particular section as well after that if you are still not uh, connected with us on social media handles make sure that you are there with us you are also subscribing to our youtube channel uh, because we keep posting regular preparation videos as well for your uh, placement preparation so make sure that you are subscribing to our youtube channel link in the notification bell as well and uh, the link for all the social media handles will be given in the description so make sure that you are following us on all our social media handles over here right we would love to connect with you and also the top three commenters on this video are going to get a free prepensa prime access we are going to quickly uh, look into prepensa prime a little more after this so you can comment anything regarding your doubts your queries anything your experience with prepensa and we would love to hear about that and we are going to pick the top three commenters as well now uh, with the mention of prepensa prime let's quickly go through the goldman sachs syllabus as well right so if you want a more detailed video on recruitment or syllabus or any other section you will already have that on our youtube channel so make sure that you are watching those before you uh, sit for the actual examination as well so once you come onto this page you see that you have all the syllabus mentioned over here so that you don't miss any of the sections right so we have numerical uh, we have logical we have verbal and then we have other language coding based as well so make sure that you are going through all of these sections and practicing the questions from here in order to secure a good place and a placement in the company as well uh, coming down because we all know that our um, you know preparation journey does not just end with the aptitude test or the technical test it ends with interview so you have to fare good score in the interview as well so we have got you covered we ha also have uh, interview preparation section for you and these are not textual interview these are video interviews for all the companies that you are looking for then we also have group discussion for you resume building because uh, goldman sachs places a lot of emphasis on resume and on projects as well so if you're looking for some cool projects and you don't already have projects uh, with you because maybe you're in your second or your third year because this when uh, this particular drive is for 2024 uh, so you we also have a lot of creative projects for you right which is going to um, help you a lot in getting place so you can go through all of these projects mentioned over here look through them uh, pick up a project that suits your caliber and you can complete those projects as well you're also going to get a certification for the same so it's um, cherry on the cake right so this is a complete a one-stop shop for all of this one-stop solution for all the students looking for placement preparations and if you begin your preparations in your second or in your first in your third years the 
placement chances in your fourth year, in a final year becomes a hundred times better, right? So this is what we are here for. We are going to help you for your preparation um, process and make sure that you're connected with us. We would be glad to hear from you as well. So thank you so much. That was it for this particular video. And um, we are going to come up with more um, sessions for you, more, uh, you know, theoretical, practical sessions for you. So make sure that you are there and connected with us. Uh, thank you so much.